All right, I am happy to be joined by Fred Lear of Young's MMA, who's getting ready to fight next Saturday at NEF 40 in Orono against Mike Kenny. Fred, how are you? Hey, Ryan, I'm well. Thank you for having me on. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, buddy, and I know you're excited to get back into that cage. This will be your second fight as a professional now. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about how this camp has been thus far. Uh, anyone that, that knows Young's uh, knows that, unfortunately, uh, one of your main training partners and good friends, uh, Ricky Dexter, is out of his main event fight with Josh Harvey now. Uh, just tell me a little bit about how that's affected you and who have been some of your, uh, your main training partners here. So to be totally honest with you, as, um, as devastating as that has been, for our team and for our family. Um, in terms of my training, it has not had a drastic impact only because I have had to do a lot of my training at night for this camp specifically. Um, you know, I work at night and I have a very odd work schedule. So um, I do, I try to get two mornings a weekend with, with that group of the guys. And then I'm in at night, every night, um, getting at least, trying to get in at least four classes um, in terms of like team exercises and team practices. But then a lot of it has been really doing it on my own and making sure that I'm getting that work in and getting drill partners and getting sparring partners. And it, it, it's been a challenge in terms of organization, but at the end of the day, it's shaped out to be pretty effective. You know, we've had some really effective, um, sessions later in the evenings. I've got guys that are, uh, still local, who have got a lot of experience that come in and work with me and get me rounds. So it's been, it's been good. It's been good. It's been tough, yeah. but it's been good. Now, has it always been right at Young's or are you going any other places and getting work in? So I typically like to supplement my training by traveling a little bit. I do a lot of jujitsu at the Academy when I'm able to travel this camp. It has not kind of uh, been that way. I, I, I've had a very busy summer. There's been a lot going on. Um, it, it hasn't worked out um, in in past camps and in the future. I do plan on continuing to supplement my training and getting some work elsewhere. Um, one place I have not yet visited, but I'd really like to get familiar with. I'm, I've got a great rapport with some of those guys. I'd like to start training a little bit at recon just to supplement my training. If nothing else, to definitely spar with those guys. They've got a good room down there solid wrestling, um, and just a good group of guys that I jive well with. Yeah, I, a couple of guys named Rob Font and Matt Probin, you know, Cam Arnold. They, they got some good uh, some good mixed martial artists down there, so it'd be good to get some work in for sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, Probin and I are very familiar with each other. We're good friends. He's trained with us um, in the interim several times before. And, uh, you know, I've never had the privilege of training with Font, but, I mean, what a great competitor. What a good guy. What a good guy to have in the room. And Cam Arnold, I'm actually very fond of. You know, we, uh, we've trained together a few times. We, uh, warm up, we warmed up at our last fight. And, uh, you know, I've gotten to know him half well. And I, I feel like he's someone that, you know, I mesh well with. And, you know, I can make him better. He can make me better. It's one of those things that I think would be beneficial for everyone involved. Now, Fred, you actually lost your, your pro debut to Bryant Bullock, and I know you've got a very busy work schedule. You have three jobs. As you mentioned earlier, it's tough to kind of get the training in. Do, do you feel that maybe your, your work aspect of, of things affected your ability to train properly for that fight? I mean, I know you're not going to make excuses, but what happened there? To be honest with you, uh, I have no excuse to make for my last performance. Uh, you know, I got beat by a better guy that evening. Um, I think I came out flat. To be honest with you, I think my last two performances, I just kind of came out flat. And, um, you know, I, I'm not going to make excuses. I'm not going to blame it on a work schedule. Should I work less? Yeah, absolutely. Um, unfortunately, I'm not in a position where I can make this the full plunge just yet. You know, I, I know that everyone tells you, like, you're going to take this seriously. You need to go all in. You need to go all in. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've lived in – or I've lived through poverty. I've had – tough times before and I have no interest in going back to that so um I need to put myself in a position to be able to get more of a full-time focus for fighting but in terms of uh my loss no I just got beat you know um it was a quick tap that I don't even remember tapping to but I do remember getting clocked with that uppercut um you know the kid came out made some excellent second round adjustments he uh he took my aggressive cage control 
and completely used it against me. He had me walking into big shots. Um, you know, he was well coached, well prepared, and um, yeah, just not my night. You know, that's gonna happen. It's super unfortunate that it happened during my pro debut. It doesn't look good, but um, you know, I'm no stranger to adversity, and it's something that we're gonna have to battle back and deal with. I'd like to get your thoughts too on the fight with uh, Zach Richard. That was uh, your your last fight um, as an amateur, and it was a draw. Uh, although a lot of people do feel like uh, you, I believe the the point was was taken away, and otherwise you maybe would have won that fight. Just give me your thoughts overall on on how you performed uh, against a tough opponent in Zach. Well, first things first, you're absolutely right. What a tough kid! Oh my God, what a tough kid! What a good kid! Um, you know, Zach's got a heart of gold. We've gotten to know each other a little bit since fighting each other. Um, really not pre- impressed with my performance that night. You know, my job is to go out there and finish opponents. That's what I do when I fight. I bring it. And you know what? For whatever reason, I was riding the fence. You know, I was not myself that night. You know, that was very – I think we showed up and we got a very, very good version of Zach Richard, one of the best versions we had seen to date. You know, he had never been past the first round. You know, that kid came to fight that night, and, um, you know, I just don't think I did very well. I think I had a hard time adjusting to his length. I didn't get him to shake that single leg that he had for a a large majority of the fight. I was able to strike effectively from our scrambling exchanges, but, you know, nothing that was going to put him away. I didn't finish three of my submission attempts that I had. You know, I had a a, an Anaconda, I had a Kimura at one point, and I – I was going for, I believe it was an inverted triangle towards the very end. No, it was an Oma Plata towards the very end. And, you know, I just didn't finish in tough positions. And that's on me and on no one else. Um, having said that, I learned a lot from that night. I knew that – I learned that my heart wasn't going to go away in bad situations. I learned that I could go the distance if need be. Um, but, yeah, just unimpressed with my performance. Now, that fight was in Bangor here at the Cross Center, and you had a lot of support. When you came out, uh, I, I can't remember what rap song that was, uh, but it, it was a good one. It was an old school song, and it I got it. Yeah, one- by M.O.P. With that's Buck- right. That's right. How, how could I forget that? That's a, that's a classic. And everyone was jacked up. Like I said, you had a ton of support there. Do you feel like that maybe made it more difficult on you to go in and perform than if you were to go somewhere else where you didn't have quite as many people there to, to go in and, and perform in front of that you knew? Well, to be totally honest with you, Ryan, I, I, I kind of disagree. You know, I think that I was the one not expected to win. I felt like Zach Richards' crowd was much bigger than mine. Mm-hmm. And I had never been booed before. I, I don't know if you remember or not, but I got booed in my hometown of Bangor, man. I mean, I've had I've had fights here before. I've fought out of Young's MMA my entire Amy and pro career. I got booed when I stepped into the cage by the 300 300- – Plus Richard fans. And, you know, Zach and I are cool about it. And I understand how to adjust to that type of adversity. But it was definitely something that took the wind out of my sails for a minute. But I had to immediately shake it off and get ready to fight. Yeah. Well, I, again, yeah, I, I knew he, he did have a lot of support there. No doubt about it. There's a lot of people cheering for him throughout that fight. Our hometown. Yeah, but yeah, so it was your hometown and you did have a lot of support there, you know, for you. So I just wonder, you know, as, as a fighter, someone who steps inside the cage, is it easier for you to to fight locally where you grew up or would you prefer to go down to Lewiston or Portland or wherever it may be and fight uh, maybe where you don't have quite as many people there that you know are, are there that bought tickets off you there to support? So that is an interesting question with a couple different um uh directions to take from that like in one sense it's easier to fight in your hometown although there is going to be that pressure you know it's easier to fight in your hometown for logistical reasons it's much easier to cut weight at home it's much easier to sleep in your own bed and not have to worry about expenses regarding travel that's very convenient having said that pressure's on you know like this is your town you got eyes on you there's expectations that you put on yourself that aren't really even there because no one really cares. The people that love you could give, you know, whether you win, whether you lose, whether you go out there and perform well, they want to see you pursuing something you're passionate about. They want to be part of something, you know, they enjoy that. But at the end of the day, you're going to put expectations on yourself. It's your hometown. You want to go out there. You want to have your best performance. You want to look good. You want to fight well. You want to put the guy away. 
Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, in terms of traveling, I think it's great to go to a, a hostile environment and deal with that because that's part of what you're going to deal with if you reach it, if you make it to the level that you want to you know, be competing at when this is all said and done. That's part of the game. Traveling, cutting weight on the road, um, accommodations, mm -hmm. all that is part of the rigmarole that you need to be adjusted for. So there's pros and cons to both. For me, in terms of competing, it doesn't make a difference. I, once the door locks, whether I'm in Lewiston, New Hampshire, Maine, Vegas, I don't care where we are. Once you're in the cage, the cage is the same dimension no matter where you go. It's the pressure that you deal with in your hometown and the pressure that you put on yourself and how you deal with traveling. Well, well, let's talk about goals and what it is that you want to accomplish now, because you are a professional. You foregoed your amateur career now, and this will be your second pro fight. So what, what is it you envision here over the next couple of years? Obviously, right now, you're, you're focused on Mike Kenny and NEF 40, uh, and that's, that's your, your main focus right now. But, you know, looking forward a year or two from now, what is it that, that we can expect to see at a friendly? What is it you want to accomplish? So... Assuming that I don't get run out of town and that I don't get hurt or providing something bad happens, um, you know, I really want to, uh, in terms of short-term goals, by the end of 2020, I want to be the Bantamweight champion of a regional promotion in New England, whether that's Cage Titans, NEF, Combat Zone, I could care less what promotion. CES is another big one, but I want to have a regional belt at 135 pounds by the end of 2020. And uh, I plan on either fighting for the Contender Series or Bellator, UFC, big promotion by the time I'm 30 years old. Wow, that, th those are great goals to have. And uh, I'm sure as you continue to press forward, uh, those are very attainable. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your weight right now. You're coming into to weight cut week, and I know that's the, that's the brutal part. Uh, how much do you have to uh, go right now? I knew you were gonna ask me that question. I made sure to weigh myself early this morning, make sure I was at my lightest. You know, I'm gonna cut a lot of weight. I usually do, it's not fun, it's not pleasant. It's never something that you get excited to do. But uh, as it stands right now, we're about 18 pounds out. We got uh, fight week starting here. I, I call fight week Sunday because that's when I start my water overload for the week. And uh, you know, my goal is to not cut more than 10 pounds. You know, obviously that's never, the case and it's never fun but it's just part of what you sign up for you know if you're not doing it someone else is and it's something you need to be doing so moving forward uh, is bantam weight the weight class that you're going to stick at or do you think you'd be taking fights at featherweight you know I, i'm not saying that i wouldn't entertain the right fight at featherweight um but i'm gonna bantam weight is my weight class that's where i belong in terms of my height and stature and to be honest with you, depending on what success I may have or depending on what adjustments are made, I could see myself fighting at flyweight with a proper diet, nutrition. And, you know, if I was fighting full time, I, I wouldn't have a problem going flyweight. I mean, this is the thing. This is, these, these are the truths that we, we don't want to acknowledge, but we have to look at in the face. Okay, I'm five foot six. Okay, can't be fighting at featherweight competitively. You know, if you're going to be fighting in the UFC, you're not fighting featherweight. You know, if I'm in Bellator, I'm not fighting featherweight. Right. I'm going to yeah. be a man weight or a flyweight. You know, am I going to like cutting weight? No, no one's going to like cutting weight. You find me a fighter or a wrestler or someone that competes in com competitive sports. Go, go find a jockey that rides horses. Tell me that guy likes cutting weight. No one likes cutting weight. It's part of what we do. It's part of what makes it all worth it at the end. Well, you're coming into that home stretch now where, yeah, you're going to have to really buckle down and get that last 18 pounds off. Let's talk a little bit about this this upcoming opponent for you, Mike Kenny. I don't know a whole lot about some of his previous opponents. However, you know, just looking at it, I, he's, he's winless. He's 0-8 uh, as an amateur and a professional when you, when you combine. He's got a lot of kickboxing bouts. Why this fight? Because it seems like you are a heavy favorite uh, against him. This should, this, it might be extra pressure on you because you're supposed to go in and, and win this fight. So why did you decide on this one? I'm going to be honest with you. I had nothing to do with picking my fights. I never have. I don't go out there and choose my opponents. You know, I fight whoever coach puts in front of me. And um, I think the idea with this fight was to take a step back in competition. You know, my last several opponents have all been undefeated. You know, Brian Bullock undefeated, Zach Richard undefeated, Walt Shea undefeated, all these guys undefeated. I, 
I fought tough guys. You know, I fought the toughest guys that I can get put in front of me. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I remember my fourth Amy fight. I fought up two weight classes on two days notice to fight another undefeated 155er. I was a bantamweight fighting at 55 on two days notice. Like, to me, I fight who coach puts in front of me. I trust in my camp. I trust in my coaching staff. Um, you know, it's not my job to pick my fights because I've made that decision to be not involved. I've made the decision to worry about training, training hard while I'm in the room, being a good example, trying to be a leader at our camp. I think the idea with this fight is to, you know, build my record and to start treating this like more of a business and nothing against Mike Kenny. You know, when you've got someone with that much experience, you can't take anything away from him. Like, yes, he's winless. That doesn't mean he can't knock me out. That doesn't mean I can't make a mistake that he can capitalize on. So, so let's talk a little bit about what he does. Well, there's tons of tape on him. If you want to go watch some of his past uh, fights, have you done that yet? Or what, what does he do? Well, it's interesting. You say that I have looked and looked and looked And I have found zero tape on this guy. Zero. Now, you keep referring to him as Mike Kenny, Mike Kenny, Mike Kenny. The contract I signed said Tom Kenny. So I've been looking up Tom Kenny, and um, I haven't found anything. So it's interesting that you're referring to him as Mike, because that's going to change the game. I'm going to have to look that up. I haven't found any footage on him. To be honest with you, I haven't concerned myself with it. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm looking on Tapology right now. It says Mike Kenny. So Are you serious? Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, God. Well, hopefully you every day. <laughs> well, I guess at the end of the day, uh, what really matters is you want to go in there and, and implement what you want to do. You're not so worried about what, what Mr. Kenny is going to do uh, and what his plans are. So, uh, you know, I, I know you're a humble guy. You're not one to talk trash, but are, are you looking for a dominant uh, knockout or submission in this fight? Can your fans expect you uh, to get your hand raised a, a quick round one finish? You know, I'm never one to like predict with like round one TKO, round one, I'm going to arm bar and straightforward. You know, I'm not one to make those kind of predictions. But, you know, yeah, my fans, my home, my hometown, this area, they can expect me to be bringing the fight. You know, I, I have one job in there, and that is to win and to win decisively. I do feel like there's a lot of pressure on me for this fight, being the favorite, being in my hometown, um, you know, fighting a guy that's a little bit older with a little bit more experience, but still hasn't had a win. You know, that that is pressure in and of itself. But at the end of the day, I'm going to worry about doing the things that Fred Lear does well. I'm going to worry about executing my game plan to the best of my ability. And the rest will take care of itself if I do those things. You know, um, I'm confident in my ability to, to weather any storm. I'm confident in my ability to stand with this kickboxer. I'm confident in my ability to wrestle with him. And I'm confident in the ability to grapple with him if that's where the exchanges take me. But um, ultimately, I'm ready to go out there and put my best performance forward. Fred, will this be your last fight in 2019? Or are you going to try to get another one before the year uh, is over? Again, you know, I'm going to have to sit down with my coaching staff and really evaluate what my options are for the rest of this year. I don't know what other cards are going to be coming up. I don't know what the dates are. I can tell you, um, you know, it's going to be – it's been a very busy summer for my family, and uh, it looks like it's going to be shaping up to be another busy fam- uh, family fall. Um, I'm going to be heading down to my hometown of Washington, D.C. twice in the month of October. Um, I've got two weddings, um, a big family get together with uh, some of my best friends and closest friends that I grew up with. So it's going to be a busy October. But aside from that, I'm open to fighting once or twice more this this year. Nice. Oh, that's great to hear. Hey, uh, one last question before I let you go. How are your uh, Redskins going to be this year? Are they going to be battling for the NFC East title? Look, I was just telling someone up the road how, how much I like you and what a nice guy you are. Hey, he's doing me such a solid by plugging me onto his social media. You suck. You know that? I hate you with all of my heart because you know exactly how the Redskins are going to do this year. You know. I know. My neighbor Bill knows. Okay? The Redskins aren't going to be good. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I'm hoping that my fighting career is going to go a lot better than the Washington Redskins 2019 season. It's not looking too hot. Well, you did draft a, a young athletic quarterback. You never know what he can turn into. So there is a, a lot of hope moving forward uh, for your skin. So I, I will say that. Ryan, thank you so much. And also, just real quick before you go, I do want to say a quick thank you to all my sponsors. I used to play basketball with you. Oh, my Someone. God. This is my roommate, Matt. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is why we can't have nice right? things. 
You had a nice stroke, right? Oh, that was many, many years ago. Many years ago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> well, thank you, Matt. Anyway, uh, so just, before, before we let you go, man, anyone you want to thank or any sponsors you have, the floor is yours, buddy. Thank you so much, Ryan. I would uh, really like to thank the uh, Farah Carpentry Services Company. Um, one of my good friends from college, Jordan Farah, started his own carpentry business. Um, He's been doing very, very well, and he's been a major sponsor for the last couple fights. It's um, it's really cool to be working with someone that is also local, also trying to, you know, raise his brand, grow his company, and uh, do big things here in Maine. Um, also, big thanks to uh, Bert Valero and the Sea Dog for always, um, you know, hopping on our bandwagon and supporting us in whatever way they can at the time. Um, Lead betters. Um, super stops here in um, the greater Bangor area. The Ledbetter family are very, very close friends of ours. I went to high school with Adam. Um, he's like family, and um, they've taken care of me ever since I was an amateur. And um, they've just been very, very supportive and super nice along the way. Um, aside from that, we have herbal tea and tobacco here in downtown Bangor. And I just want to thank the Hair Fair for uh, signing on as a new sponsor for 2018 and 19. Awesome. Well, Fred, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I look forward to seeing you up in Orno at the Collins Center at NEF 40 on the 7th of next month. Hey, you too, Ryan. Can't wait for the post-fight interview. <laughs>